out front now, Mikhail Khodorkovsky. He was, uh, at one point, the top oligarch, the richest man in Russia. And then he took Putin on, championing the opposition. He ended up in prison for 10 years. And he, obviously, uh, is, is not in Russia now. Mikhail, thank you so much for being with me. You know, one month into Putin's invasion, American officials say that the Russian military doesn't have enough food, it doesn't have enough fuel, they have all kinds of logistical problems. Soldiers don't even have gloves. They're suffering from frostbite. Did you ever imagine this situation? Uh, Truly, I'm not surprised. But on the other hand, I will have to say that the level of their unpreparedness has come as a great surprise to me. In fact, I will say in the words of the Ukrainians is that to, they are heavily helped by their corruption. Western officials, you know, they, they say Putin is frustrated, obviously, by the stall of his military uh, and that he has been lashing out. I know, Mikhail, you have spoken about Putin displaying what you called signs of senile paranoia, but you didn't think he was, you know, crazy in, in any traditional sense. How dangerous is he right now? On, uh, Putin... Well, we have to understand that Putin is sufficiently dangerous, and yet he's not suicidal. He can use mass destruction weapons, but only if he knows that he'll go unpunished. When you mentioned President Biden, you know, he has talked about the threats. He doesn't want World War III. He says it's a real threat. Putin could use chemical weapons in Ukraine. Uh, obviously, there are fears of what he could do with the nuclear arsenal. Uh, so far, obviously, he has not even used tactical nuclear weapons, but there are these fears out there. Do you think that they're real fears? Because they are what's holding NATO and the West back. Well, I believe that actually what we are seeing now is that Western leaders are repeating the same mistake that their predecessors committed years ago with Hitler, when Hitler was very vulnerable back then, when he, uh, when he tried to invade Europe. And that's what his accomplices did admit during the Nuremberg Tribunal. However, what we know is that Western leaders kept saying that they were afraid to aggravate Hitler, and they thought, well, if we are not showing any resistance, then eventually he'll stop. However, that mistake has cost hundreds of millions human lives. Hundreds of millions human lives were lost, and the same mistake is being committed now. Putin will never use nuclear weapons unless he knows he is in safety. And once he's been convinced that, yes, you are safe, then obviously that just more, th that just triggers him towards that. So the Wall Street Journal reports that President Biden was ready to sanction Russian oligarch Roman Abramovich. He ultimately did not because President Zelensky said, hold on. He, Zelensky thought that Abramovich could help broker some sort of a peace deal here. Um, obviously, I know you and Abramovich know each other. Uh, I've got a picture of you on the day your companies announced that mega merger. Uh, there you are on the screen, uh, you and Roman Abramovich. Do you think he is the kind of key person that Zelensky thinks he is in terms of negotiating a peace settlement? Well, I believe that actually these negotiations are so far fake in their nature. And they can only be real when Putin can feel that he can I, that he might either lose in Ukraine or if Ukraine capitulates. And obviously, uh, this uh, may not be possible so far because of Ukraine's courage and support from the West and also if the no-fly zone is provided. Um, but as of now, but, but for sure, this cannot be facilitated with the help of Abramovich's efforts. Do you think Abramovich or anyone else, Mikhail, at this point, any other oligarch, deserves to not be sanctioned by the West? Well, the way I see it is quite simple. 
oligarchs are not true oligarchs in that sense that they actually do not influence Putin. That's just an idiotic, preposterous idea of my say so. Yet, they are Putin's instruments of influence. And to see for real who has broken their relations with Putin would be when they actually denounce him and when they admit that he is a war criminal. And if that doesn't happen, that means that they, they're still, they still depend on him and they're still dangerous. Mikhail, thank you very much. I'm grateful to you for your time and look forward to speaking with you again soon. Thank you. Thank you very much.